can't possibly justify what you're doing, Cyrus! Okay, sorry, I'm ready. Uh. I represent the estate of your Uncle Cyrus Criticos. We have an Uncle Cyrus? My dad said he squandered the family fortune. We have a family fortune? Well, no, Cyrus squandered it. Cyrus recorded this message six weeks ago. He asked it to be played for you in the event of his death. I've instructed my lawyer, Mr. Morris, to deliver the essential elements in my last will and testament. Sadly, if you're watching this now, it means I am no longer among the living. Could you come back tomorrow? Is that maybe a possibility? Oh, tomorrow? Let me see. Oh, there's about 5,570 houses right now without power. 5,570 houses right now without power. 5,570 houses right now without power. Give it to them, Ben. Key? A key to what? A key to your new house. This house is the fruit of my life's work. Uh, Cyrus was a genius when it came to finances. Basically, you and your family don't ever have to worry about money again. This is for real. It is a one-of-a-kind home. It's my home, actually. But the only regret I have is that I never really got to know my nephew, Arthur. This house is my attempt to make up for that. Like a cathedral. All right, first rule, no throwing stones. <laughs> it's marvelous though, isn't it? A living work of art. Many people died in the quest for this book. It was written in the 15th century by an astrologer named Basilius. This is the Arcanum. In it, he describes the making of a certain machine, one that can see into the future. He wrote it while he was under demonic possession. As the spirits are released one by one, the house then draws them to its center. Each one adds its energy to the machine, powering it up. I can't believe Cyrus built it. Built what? What are you talking about? Powering it up for what? To open the ocularis infernum. The ocularis, what's that? It's Latin. The eye of hell. And what else do you see when you travel, Tom? An eye. A single, giant eye. The eye of hell? 
I see fire in the ground, smoke in the air. It blocks out the stars. In hell, there's an eye that sees everything. The past and the future, the heaven and earth, the blessed and the damned. Basilius' device. We're in the middle of a machine designed by the devil and powered by the dead. If knowledge is power, then the man who controls the ocularis would be the most powerful man on earth. Your uncle. Bobby, don't touch anything, okay? Time somebody showed up. Did you play? Mm -hmm. Who are you? I'm the power guy. Ah, don't touch. Look, you probably don't know this, but your house knocked out the power of the whole tri quad area. I need to get inside and check the breakers. The thirteenth ghost is a failsafe. In order to stop the process, the house needs a sacrifice of life instead of death. Daddy! Mommy, don't look. I don't look. A willing human sacrifice. The sacrifice of the broken heart. The sacrifice of the broken heart. The only ghost to be created out of an act of pure love. You're the thirteenth ghost. This house is not a house. It is a machine. In New York City, on a foggy evening, an army plane seeking a nearby landing field crashed into the 58th floor of 58th floor, 58th floor, 58th floor of this Wall Street skyscraper. Parts of the plane, bricks and chunks of mortar fell to the street. Fortunately, New York's downtown financial and business district was deserted at the time. Terrific impact tore a 10-foot hole through the wall. The front of the plane was reduced to rubble on this office floor, 700 feet above the ground. Here, five bodies were found, the pilot and four others, including a women's Army Corps lieutenant. The fuselage and a wing of the splintered plane fell and caught on the 20th floor ledge, starting a fire.
As the five bodies are taken away, this second terrible accident recalls last summer's similar tragedy when a plane crashed into the world's tallest building, the 102-story Empire State Building. Two such air collisions within 10 months in New York City spur engineers to find sure safety measures for aircraft flying over the crowded metropolitan area. So there you have it, 13 ghosts, Cyrus, and now you begin to see the connection between the Cyrus archetype and the island of Cyprus, which is made of copper. Now you'll notice the orange juice shown prominently behind the laptop as they discuss the death of Cyrus. Cyrus then offers his house to the family to help complete the curse, to help offer up the sacrifice, the 13th ghost. And it's clear that copper is the theme, that orange metallic color. And of course the actor who plays Cyrus, his name is Abraham like Lincoln, the first copper president. Why was Lincoln the first copper president? Because under his presidency, the transatlantic copper cable went underneath the ocean and connected to Europe. And of course they have to have Cyrus die at 57, that's 5G whiz. And there is the orange man in the jumpsuit. And I'm starting to wonder, who is Cyrus? Who is the orange man? There's the key, just like Janus, the Janus key. We saw this in the 007 film with the two 007s. And of course, Trump loves his keys. He is Janus, Bifrons, Biff. So, the family moves in to the copper and glass house built by the billionaire, Cyrus, which we now know as Trump. Now what you're going to see next is pretty bizarre, because you just saw what is called the Black Zodiac. And they also call this the Oculus. And it is made out of copper. The massive, beautifully designed brass and copper rings that form the floor of the Oculus room were created with a combination of special effects. This is the Black Zodiac. So, the sacrifice is offered in the middle of the ocularis and the 13th ghost is offered and at that point time travel occurs now you can see also these repeated Trump Tower themes the architecture is undeniable 
In that image, it almost looks like it would fit into the open space like a key. Now, in this film, they're surrounded by spells written on glass that are supposed to box in and trap these ghosts. She pulls out the Arcana, which is the exact name of the tarot card deck that has trump cards in it. This is the 19th trump card called the Sun, and there's a wall behind it, and a sun like Apollo, like Trump's mirror in The Apprentice Show, sitting right across from him. The device then opens up time portals through sacrifice, as she explains here. You begin to wonder about Tesla and John Trump and Trump Tower. What is it really? Is it some kind of time machine? You see the clock in front of Trump Tower. And we heard also that this time portal is some kind of an eye. It is the dark eye. The eye of evil, as this boy explains in Childhood's End. So, similar themes of a dark eye running through two separate movies, decades apart, that we just so happen to pick up. Now, she just keeps explaining about this machine and how it was built and why this house was built to gain power, ultimate power, over the universe. He who has the key unlocks the power. Now there's many similarities between this house that was built and Trump Tower. The lobby looks very similar. There are escalators clad in bronze and what looks to be copper. Lots of glass just like the house that you see here. And it all links back to power and energy which is exactly what was going on during the time of Tesla and John Trump there were particle accelerators and power feuds and so on and so forth makes you wonder what he may have learned or picked up from his uncle Now the, the, the device spins up and they've got the 13th sacrifice who is offering himself willingly but then at the last minute he picks up on the fact that he's being tricked and deceived and he shuts the whole thing down. She mentions a broken heart as the sacrifice and that dovetails into Trump's broken heart initiative which is just smoke and mirrors but he wants people to believe he's doing something about traffic and when in actuality he is doing very little on the elite level, if anything, as he protects all of his friends that were involved in all of this going back decades. The Clintons. So his children are trapped as part of the bait to draw him in to the middle of the Black Zodiac. And of course, Zodiac has 88 constellations, another time travel reference time and space and that brings us to 40 Wall Street which is Trump's most prized possession his most prized and valuable building full of more criminals per square foot than any other building in the world and it is topped with copper and I've been looking for this copper key for a very long time and had not found it until now but this is it its flagpole is topped with a crystal ball, which sees into the future, or so we're told. The building completed construction on May 1st, the highest day of Illuminati sacrifice, and the founding of the Illuminati a hundred years earlier. 
10 inch like Westinghouse Electric Company who of course were in competition with Nikola Tesla to bring about the electric revolution. They were tenants in Trump's building in 1941, which adds to the mystery of Tesla Westinghouse, John Trump. And just days before Trump was born, a, an airplane crashed into this building in 1946, the year he was born as well. This is it here. Here's the vintage footage. And of course, the building did not fall down. There was a gash, but nobody inside was hurt, unlike other buildings that fell down years later. But I thought it was interesting, the time frame, and that this happened 600 times 60 times 60 seconds before Trump was born. And it also happened 47 days before George Bush Jr. was born. Which was also the same exact date that Dewey, the governor of New York, set up a board of supervisors for a world trade center. Imagine the odds of that. Now there's more to this 40 Wall Street address Trump's building because there was a sculpture that used to exist there. The sculpture was of Oceanus, which is linked directly into Mithra, which we've already explained to you is part of the Statue of Liberty cult, Sol Invictus. And now we have more signs and symbols from the era of what America really stands for. Take care and be safe, you guys.